morning folks pretty nice night last night didn't get too awful cold out get up and get moving this morning that'll warm me right up I was gonna get the fire going again but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get up and pack up Got a horse fly buzzing around out here this morning I can hear him just hit the tarp probably be on me shortly feeling pretty lazy wouldn't hurt me to go back to sleep for an hour man I'm not sure what time it is but I see the sun back here directly over here to the east looks like it's coming up through the tree so I'm guessing it's probably 7 38 o'clock guys I kind of thought what we'd do this morning <clears throat> as we're packing up camp and things since this is a beginning series I'm going to put this in the basic bushcrafting series I thought what I would do is I would go ahead and go over the kit that we used last night um, talk about the individual pieces and things like that so that people would understand what you can carry or what I do carry and how little it really takes we didn't use half the stuff we actually brought out here because my pack always has enough stuff in it for you know spending quite a bit of time out if I decide to do that but for an overnight you really don't need much so I thought we'd go over just the kit components that we really used last night and talk about that and I think what you're going to find out is when you look through this and we talk about it is there's really nothing that we used other than a couple luxury items that fall outside the first five C's of survivability we had a couple luxury items we'll talk about as we go, but other than that, everything fell within the five C's. So let's go over this stuff one piece at a time real quick. Okay, so starting at the top of the list, let's talk about cutting tools. We only used two cutting tools yesterday. The first one was this butcher knife that I've used in a lot of other videos. This knife has been reproduced. It's on our website as the Pathfinder Butcher Knife by Habilis Bush Tools. This one is an original that was got obtained from a yard sale for three bucks. Um, the replica is pretty close to this. It's not exact, but it's pretty close to an original butcher knife style knife. The other tool that we used for a cutting tool was this Wetterling's Fine Forest Axe. And I really didn't use it very much. I didn't use it for anything that I couldn't have done with my knife. It's just more convenient to have that second cutting tool for chopping off larger branches and things like that that we use on our shelter. So I don't have to cut them with my knife and dull my blade cutting big sticks when I can just chop them with an axe. So that was the cutting tools that we used. So going down the list to combustion devices, obviously we started our fire with a flint rock and our butcher knife. We used some charred material in a tin for that and basically that was just the pithy inner uh, parts of a mullen stalk that had been charred ahead of time in another fire and kept in an Altoids tin. The other two things that I keep in my belt pouch for starting fire, I always have at least three ways to start fire. Generally, I have at least four, but I always carry at least three in my belt pouch. I have charred material with a piece of flint. I have a ferro rod. I have a cigarette lighter in my pocket. And then I have a large magnifying glass from a pair of binoculars that's probably a 20 power magnifying uh, magnification lens in my belt pouch as well. So those three items stay in my belt pouch. Cigarette lighter usually in my pocket and it gives me four ways to start fire. Yesterday all we used was the butcher knife and a rock and our char tin to start our fire last night. Containers. Containers are a big one. So let's talk about containers real quick. Um, in my mind containers are a really really important thing. We used a couple different containers last night. First of all, we used our bush pot, our 1.8 liter bush pot, and really we used it just to heat the water up. Um, what I've done with this one is I've set this up into a, somewhat of a cook system in that I have this titanium bowl. It doesn't even have a brand name on it. I found it on Amazon, and I got the measurements, and I knew it would fit inside the bush pot, so I bought it for that just for a mixing or eating bowl. And then I've got this Sierra cup, which actually came from Amazon as well and it fits inside of the other two and nests inside the other bowl and we use this to eat our soup out of it. so we had three containers basically in that cook system that nested inside of each other 
and then we kept our food packets inside here, the food that we're trialing. The other container that we had last night was our 32 ounce water bottle, the Pathfinder 32 ounce water bottle, and that was what we kept our initial water in, and we went and collected more. And I've still got some left in here that I didn't use to cook with last night. So I think I'll have a drink of that this morning. And then it has a nesting cup with it as well. So that gives me a pretty well-rounded cook kit that I can use when I'm in the woods. Now, I did use a titanium spork last night. Again, the same one we saw on our website. I don't like the sporks that have the tines on a spoon. Those tines are never long enough to really do you any good. So they're not really much of a fork. I like having the fork on one end and a spoon on the other. Really convenient. It's made out of titanium. It's pretty much, you know, you're not going to destroy the thing. It's going to last you forever. So that's what I carry for eating. It's really not a container. It's more of a convenience. So I would count that as a convenience item and not one of my five C's. Although it is kind of a cutting tool, it's still a convenience because I can eat with a stick. If I have to, I can drink that soup straight out of the cup. Okay. So let's talk about our cover element. Obviously we had this eight foot by eight foot tent smith's oil skin tarp that we used as our shelter last night. We had this exercise mat from Walmart, Gold's Gym brand, that was part of our conduction deterrent, if that's what you want to call it, to help us fight the cold ground. We had our browse bag that we used as our pillow last night. Could also be used for collecting tinder and things like that ahead of time. We had a wool blanket shroud that we used in our browse bag as a pillow. And then we had a large queen size wool blanket. And this one is a merino wool blanket that we carry on our website. That's 96 by 96 made right here in the United States. So that pretty much covers our cover element. And that's enough to keep you good and warm in at least three seasons. Now, the only other thing that we really used last night that wasn't a convenient item as part of the five seasons was cordage. We had a piece of rope that we tied to the tree for our backpack. We had about two 25 foot lengths of 550 cord. And then we had one roll of number 36 bank line. Aside from that, the only things that we used last night, which I would consider more convenience than anything else, is we had the grill put pack grill that we used to cook on top of. We had our <laughs> trying to reach it here on top of my tarp. We had our UCO candle lantern that we lit up last night at the end of the night to give us some ambient light. And then of course we had the headlight that we used on our camera, which I didn't really use it for looking around. I used it more for light to film, you know, during hours of low light. But other than that, we really didn't use a whole lot. We had a pair of gloves, again, that's a convenience item. But when you're rooting through the sticks and things like that on the ground to get firewood and tinder and kindling material. A pair of gloves, a good pair of leather gloves is always a plus. It can definitely save you a lot of headaches if you were to get into, you know, a millipede, a spider, a snake, something like that, or even a thorny branch. It can definitely give you a lot of comfort to have leather gloves on. It also makes it really easy for pulling pots on and off the fire, making adjustments to the grills and things like that. So I generally carry a pair of leather gloves with me, but that's more of a convenience item. So other than just a few things, really everything that we used last night falls within the five C's. It was either a cutting tool, combustion device, part of our cover element, a container, or it was cordage. So in the short term, like an overnighter, it really doesn't take much to get along. And as you move into two, three, four days, things like that, other than having a headlamp and things like that, if you're not traveling or if you know the area that you're in, you can circumvent needing the compass. Obviously, some type of cotton material is always going to be good to have. 
a cloth sail needle in case you have to make a repair of some kind. Some duct tape or cargo tape if you have to make a repair or you had to do some type of emergency binding that you couldn't do. Otherwise, it would help you with your first aid for sure. And then other than that, you're pretty much set. So it doesn't take a whole lot to get along. It just takes picking the right items and that's what's important and that's what I think a lot of people, where a lot of people miss the boat. They, they don't pick the right items to have in that initial kit. And that initial kit that you build is the most important part of everything that you do that surrounds that. If those first five C's that you choose and the redundancies of those five C's are really good, robust, quality items that are going to last you a lifetime, then you don't have to worry so much about the peripheral items. Then you can kind of pick and choose what you want for luxury items. The first five C's, all of those items should be the best quality that you can afford. They should be the best items that have the most versatility for you in multiple weather conditions. And then, you know, they should be something that you can trust your life with. And that's what I like to, you know, that's the way I like to look at things. You know, can I trust my life to this item? And if it's the only one I've got, Am I going to trust my life to it? If I had to go down to one cutting tool, it would be, you know, a five to six inch knife with a nice, heavy, high carbon steel blade on it. If I had to choose one fire element or one type of combustion, I would choose the ferrocerium rod because it's going to work whether it's wet or dry. It's going to throw those heavy duty sparks and I can find dry enough tinder most of the time to ignite it with just a ferro rod if I have to. I've always got my knife in a rock for charred material, but I don't need that if I have a ferro rod because I can make sparks with that. The open flame thing of a lighter is just a convenience. If you're carrying one, that's great. If you're not, a ferro rod will do what you need it to do. So that would be my number one choice. If I had to choose one container over anything else, it would be something that, like a 32 ounce water bottle and a nesting cup that was going to be able to contain my water to carry it over distance and I would still be able to cook in a nesting cup and things like that. And then cover elements if I had to choose only one and I could only have one it would be the wool blanket because the wool blanket can be used for shelter it can be used to wrap up in it can be used for outerwear it's going to hold a lot of its insulative value even if it gets soaking wet and it's going to be nice and warm on a colder night and as far as cordage goes if I could only choose one it would always be bank line over anything else because of the versatility of bank line I can use it for anything I'm using paracord for and if I need it stronger, I can always make reverse wrap two-ply cordage out of it. And if it's 36, number 36 bank line is almost 300-pound test or right at 300-pound test, if I reverse wrap two-ply cordage that stuff, it's going to be not quite double the strength, but it's going to be close enough to be the same strength as 550 cord anyway with less stretch and more versatility because I can break it down into three solid fibers instead of seven filament fibers that are going to just fray and come apart on you. So... That's just my two cents for a basic video. I wanted to give you guys a few of my thoughts. Hope I didn't bore you with the soapbox um, of how I think about things and how I relate you know, my core element of my kit to everything else. I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here for this short series on a basic overnight setup. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, and for everyone affiliated with the Pathfinder School. We'll be back with another video as soon as we can. Thanks, guys.